Good day, Grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson in Physical Science. Today's lesson we're going to be carrying on with two-body systems, which basically use, is an application of Newton's second law. We're going to hopefully move on to Newton's third law and finally the universal law of gravitation. If we don't make it all the way there, no big deal. We can carry on with it in the next lesson. Okay, so... Before I carry on, I would just like to encourage you all to join the Turnable class. Um, the reason I would like you to join the Turnable class is so that you can message me because ideally I would like to make this to be an interactive session where you can message me and ask me questions or tell me sections that you're struggling in or even point me towards questions from exam papers that you um, would like gone through because you might be struggling with them. So. I would like that to happen. So please join the term able class so that you can, grade 11 science class so that you can message me. Okay, so in the last lesson we were talking about um, two body systems. And remember I told you that actually they're very, very popular at the moment in exam papers. Um, the reason being new in the curriculum. And for that reason, and for their main reason, teachers are very, very excited about asking them and the final examiners in grade 12 are very excited to ask them. So for that reason, we're going to go through it nice and slowly and make sure that you can understand and do all of them. So it says a mode, and we did this last time I saw you guys or that I was on this um, lesson platform. But um, I did it in two different ways and I thought that maybe that was a little bit confusing for you guys. So what I've decided to do is do it again and make sure you understand what's going on. So we've got a motor car, okay, and it has a mass of 900 kgs, pulls a trailer S of mass 150 kgs over the level road in an easterly direction. Easterly direction. So we've got a motor car, and as I've mentioned before, I will never, ever, ever win prizes for my diagrams. So it's a motor car and it is traveling in the easterly direction and it is pulling a trailer. Okay, the motor car has a mass of 900 kgs and the trailer S has a mass of 150 kgs. The engine of the car exerts a force of 8,000 newtons. So it is pulling it forward with an 8,000 newton force. The car experiences a frictional force of 1,800 newtons. That's the force of friction in the car. And the trailer has a frictional force of 300 newtons. Okay, now it says, draw a separate free body diagram for the car and the trailer. Now grade 11s, what I'd like to suggest you do is that it doesn't matter whether they ask you to draw a separate free body diagram for all the ups, up, objects in the two body system or not. I would suggest you do it because this year is basically the trick on how to do the whole question. If you have got your free body diagrams and they're beautiful and they're perfect, then doing everything else is going to be exceptionally easy. So first of all, a free body diagram is a colored in circle, as one of my students likes to say, or a dot. OK, so and you want the dot to be big enough that you can draw all your forces on it. OK, so colored in circle. Right, so let's think about this. Let's do the trailer first. So this is object A S, the trailer. We know that there is the force of gravity. They said clearly label all the forces. So there's a force of gravity down and there is a normal force up, F normal, right? And sorry, I'm just gonna move this S to here so that you can see what we're doing. Okay, that's S over there, okay? So that normal force has to be equal to the force of gravity. So if you've made a mistake like I have, and you've drawn it so that this normal force is shorter than that, then draw a little line between along them, like you do in maths when you want to show that lines are equal, to show that these two lines are equal. Okay, I'm going to quickly do my rant. If you're doing free body diagrams, you should be using a pencil, a ruler, and an eraser. Okay, the reason for the pencil is that if you make mistakes, you can use an eraser. So it's no use having a pencil and then crossing it out because or scratching it over like I did with this S here. In fact, what should have happened is I should have done this and then I should have done that. 
okay? Because you guys really should make sure it's nice and neat, okay? Secondly, when you're drawing your forces, your forces should be straight lines. Now, unfortunately, my software doesn't allow for me to draw, um, doesn't allow for rulers on my software. So I cannot use a ruler to draw and there's no snap to grid or anything like that. So you guys have to though, draw nice straight lines, okay? And it's important that if the forces are of equal strength or size, that they are equal lengths. So like I've said, if you cannot draw it perfectly, then do little lines to show that they're equal. Okay, so that's what we've got there. We have also, do you agree, a force forward that's pulling the trailer and that's the tension in the rope. Okay, it's going that way. And then we're assuming the car does move forward, okay? And then do you agree there's a force of friction? The force of friction. Okay, so those are the forces that are acting on the trailer. Now let's talk about the forces acting on the car. So again, we've got a nice free body diagram dot. We'll cut it in circle. Then we've got the force of gravity down. And we've got F normal up, okay? And they are perpendicular um, to the ground. Right, then we've got the force applied or the force of the engine, the force applied to the force of the engine, which is pulling the car forward, degree. Then we've got the tension, this tension here. That there, that there has got tension both ways. The car is filling the trailer and the trailer is filling the car so therefore there is tension both ways in the rope plus there's a force of friction force of friction and there's a little bit of leeway here because because we don't know what the size of the tension is you can have it that the force of friction is a little bit smaller or a bit longer than the tension okay all they're really looking for is the fact that they're both in the opposite direction to the motion Okay, so those are our free body diagrams. And now it says, the next part of the question would be, determine the acceleration of the car. I mean, of, determine acceleration of the system experiences. Okay, so let's think about this. Let's talk about the motor car. There is an F net because there has to be an F net if there's acceleration. So they're saying determine acceleration. An F net is always the sum of all the forces. Okay, it's always the sum of all the forces. So we're going to choose the direction that the car is moving in as positive, which means that everything else is negative. Okay, so do you agree that the normal force and the force of gravity don't play? We're talking about the car now, hey? Do you agree that the sum these perpendicular forces, the force of gravity and the normal force, don't play any part in the car moving left or right, okay? So what have we got? We've got F net is equal to the force of the engine plus the force of friction plus the tension. Now I know the tension and the force of friction in the opposite direction, but remember that you are showing you haven't written this. I'm assuming you haven't written this in the exams or the test. You want to show the teachers or the examiners that you know that the definition of the net force is that there's the sum of all the forces, right? So then we can go, okay, fine. Well, F net or F res is mass times acceleration. This force of the engine is 8,000 plus the force of friction is minus 1800 okay and then obviously you've got plus minus the tension because it's in the opposite direction okay so then let's work this out we've got the mass of the cards 900 okay equals 8000 minus 1800 which is 6200 sorry a minus t so we're going to call that equation one now we can look at the trailer because we're going to do simultaneous equations. So what we're going to say is, okay, fine. Again, we've got F net is equal to, in this case, we've only got two forces acting, which is awesome. We've got the tension, which is pulling it forward, plus minus the force of friction because it's in the opposite direction. 
So the tension we don't know, the mass of this object is 150 A minus the force of friction, which is 300 Newtons. Okay, so do you see we've now got two equations? We've got 150A is equal to T minus 300, and we've got 900A is equal to 6,200 minus T. Okay, that's quite cool. So what we can do now is we can substitute in. We can say, okay, fine, let's, we're finding, we're finding the acceleration, right? So let's solve this for T. So we're gonna go T is equal to 150A, 50a plus 300 and let's substitute that into there so this becomes 900a is 6200 minus and then let's put a little bracket in always put a bracket when you've got a minus 150a plus 300 right so if we now rearrange this and i'm going to change color so it's new We've got 900A is equal to 6,200 minus 150A minus 300. So if you take that to that side, this becomes 1,050A is equal to 5,900, 5,900. So therefore, if we put this in our calculator, we get, 5900 divided by 1050 equals 5.6. And remember, we're always running off to two decimal places, so it's 5.62. So it's 5.62 meters per second squared. And then go look at your question again. It says determine the acceleration, not the magnitude of the acceleration. It says determine the acceleration, which means we need to give the size. So if we do that, we determine, the, I mean, we have to give the direction as well. So it's going to be to the east or in the easterly direction or to the right, because the right happens to be east in this case. Okay, so it's to the east. So now the acceleration degree is 5,62 meters per second squared east. Okay, now it says determine the tensile force in the cable that connects the car to the trailer. Well, that's very easy because what we can do, we've got two equations that have got that relationship between the A and the T. We've got this dude here and we've got this dude here. I'm just going to substitute into this one. So we're going to go 150 times by 5 comma 62 plus 300 is equal to T. It really doesn't matter which one you substitute into. It should give you the same answer. So again, we're going to use our calculators and we're going to clear. And we're going to go 150 times by 5.62 close bracket plus 300 100 equals really 1143 so therefore t equals 1143 newtons newtons and there you go so that is how we would do this question nice 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 Okay, the best way to get to grips with these things, as always, as I always say, is to practice. So what we're going to do is we're now going to do another example. Okay, so what do we have now? And this is an old exam paper question, so you guys need to make sure you know how to do it, okay? It says a block of mass 8 kgs, here it is, okay, is resting on a rough horizontal table, which means as soon as we see rough, we think force of friction, okay? is connected by a light inextensible string. What does it mean? It doesn't stretch. Inextensible means that it doesn't stretch, which passes of a light frictionless pulley, which means it doesn't participate in this equation in the sum whatsoever. We don't care about it. To pull another block of mass five kgs. Okay. The block hangs vertically as shown in the diagram. Okay. Now it says there's a 15 Newton force is applied to the 8 kilogram block at an angle of 30 degrees, causing the block to side to the left, to the left. So I'm going to say that that's the positive direction. 
the cap. Now it says, the coefficient of the kinetic friction between the 8 kilogram block and the surface of the table is 0 0.25. Okay, ignore the effects of air friction. It's always nice. Okay, now, the first thing they ask us to do is draw a free body diagram showing all the forces acting on the 8 kilogram block. Okay, so let's do that. It says draw the or draw a free body diagram showing all the forces acting onto the 8 kilogram block. Okay, so it's a free body diagram. So we want a colored in dot. Right. Do you agree? <sighs> Sorry, I just really don't like when it does that. Um, okay, so it's a colored in dot. Right. Do you agree that we have a force of gravity and it is down? Force of gravity. And then we've got the force app, which we can call the normal, or you can call it the force of the table on the block. Okay, right. There is this force here, which is basically the force of the, well, we can call it the tension. The tension in the string, which is actually caused by the mat, the weight of the five kilogram block. This is the tension. There is a force of friction over here, and they said there's a force of friction between the eight block, but do you see that it's moving to the left? They said to us that this whole thing is moving to the left. So therefore there's a force of friction this way. And finally they say there is this 15 Newtons, and I know that's not quite at an angle of 30 degrees, so let me make it neater. Okay, let's just do that neater. There we go. Oh, still not 15 degrees. Okay, never mind. 15 newtons. Okay, and that's supposed to be an angle of 30 degrees. It's more like 45, but never mind. Okay, so those are all the forces that are acting on this. Okay, ta -da! done. Now it says, calculate the magnitude of the normal force acting on the 8 kilogram block. Okay, now normally, normally we would go, well, the force of gravity matches this force, and therefore, that must be the same as this. However, what do we have here? We have got this 15 Newtons that is doing two things. It is pulling the block to the left, but it's also pulling the block up. And since this block is stationary in the vertical direction, okay, the block is not moving down and it's not moving up, it is stationary. This means the vertical component of this 15 Newtons plus this force here have to equal the force of gravity down. So therefore this, F normal, does not equal Fg in this case because the fact that we have this component here which is pulling it up as well. So together they have to equal Fg, which is why I didn't label this F normal. I label, but is F normal, but it's based, I didn't want you to think of it as a normal force, which is always equal to force of gravity. In this case, this is F normal, but it doesn't equal the force of gravity because of this vertical component that is also pulling it up. So we need to work out now what this is. So in order to do that, the first thing we need to do is work out this vertical component. So we're going to use Sarkatoa. We want the vertical component, okay, we've got the hypotenuse. The vertical component is opposite to the angle, so we're going to use sine. So we're going to say sine of 30 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is, I'm going to say, force vertical over the hypotenuse of 15. So we're going to go 15 sine of 30 degrees equals force vertical. And then what we're going to do is get out our calculators and I just went past it. Okay, right. And we're going to go 15 sine 30. And again, grade 11s, I'm going to stress with you guys that you make sure that this does not have a big R there because that might, probably means that it's in radians. If it's in radians, you're getting this whole sum wrong because this needs to be in degrees. Okay, so it's 15 over 2, which is just 7.5. So that's 7, 5 newtons upwards is the force vertical, right? So that's 7, 5, right? 
the weight of this object force due to gravity this year? Okay, if G equals mass times acceleration, mg. The mass of the object is 8 times by 9, comma 8. So what do we have? We've got 8 times 9.8, which becomes 78.4, 78.4 newtons. Therefore, we can say that the normal force is going to be 78,4 minus 7,5. And that becomes minus 7.5 is 70,9. So the normal face force in this case is 70,9 newtons. So that's a nice question because it's the first time we've really seen how the normal force is not necessarily equal to the force of gravity if you're pulling it up with a, a tension in a string or something. Okay, right, so now, so we've done that one. Now it says calculate the magnitude of the tension in the string connecting the two blocks. So they want this, they want the tension in this, okay? So what did I say in the last example? I said that you always, 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 if you're working things out like tension, you need the information from both free body diagrams. So it doesn't matter what is going on, you need to work out, you need to draw both free body diagrams. So let's get started with that. Okay. So this dude here, let's draw his free body diagram and do it over here. There are only two forces acting on it, which is quite nice. There's the force down, which is the force of gravity on the five kilograms. And there's the force up, which is the tension. Okay, so that's nice and easy. So do you agree that this one's equation is really easy? We've got F net or F res is equal to MA, which equals T minus plus the force of gravity. But we've chosen this as positive, which means that this F force of gravity is going to be negative. So that therefore it's the mass, which is 5A, is equal to T minus 5 times 9, 8. So therefore we can say that 5A is equal to T minus, and let's get out our calculator. So it becomes 5 times 9.8, which is 49. 49, and that is equation 1. Now we need to look at the 8 kilogram one. And before we can do that, we actually need to look at, work out this horizontal component here. Because this horizontal component of this 15 Newton force is the component that's actually pulling this to the left. Okay, not the 15 Newtons. The 15 Newtons is doing two things. It is pulling it to the left and it is lifting it up. But only this horizontal component is pulling it to the left. So let's do that. If we do it over here, I'm just going to write it over, draw it over here. So we're looking at this line here, and this is the adjacent. And we know that the 15 Newtons is the hypotenuse. So if we look at Sarkatoa, cos of 30 degrees is equal to the adjacent, which is what we want. So I'm going to call that F horizontal over the hypotenuse of 15. So we've got 15 cos 30 degrees equals F horizontal. So we're going to get out of our calculators and we're going to say 15 cos of 30 close bracket equals 12,99. So the horizontal component is 12,99 newtons. So this thing is being pulled to the left by 12,99 newtons. Okay, so now let's look at the horizontal movement. We know that the net force on the 8 kilograms is equal to 8A, which is equal to, now let's think, we're choosing this as positive, right? To the left as positive. So it's equal to T, no, no, sorry, not T, sorry. It's equal to um, the force horizontal 
plus minus T plus minus the force of friction, right? So that's 8A is equal to the horizontal component, which just worked out as 12,99. Minus the tension, which is what we're trying to find out. Minus the force of friction, but the force of friction is equal to minus the coefficient of friction, which is 0, 0,25 times the F normal. And the F normal is what we worked out just recently. We just worked it out now. Um, times the F normal. And that's why they asked us to work out the F normal. Okay, so what did we work it out to be? I've erased it. Um, okay, that's easy enough to work out again. Um, this year was 8 times by 9 come to 70 point something. Um, okay, let me just quickly work it out. It's 8 times 9.8 minus bracket 15 sine 30 close bracket equals 70,9. So if normal we worked out to be was 70,9 newtons. Okay, so that's what they asked us to work us out. And remember what I said to you before grade 11 said they always give these things in order for the information that you want, okay? So in other words, they're not going to say to you, oh, um, prove that the color of the sky is blue, and then the next question is, how deep is the ocean? Everything is related. So the reason they asked you to work out the normal force was because we need it for this question here, okay? So therefore, we can say that 8A is equal to 12,99 minus t minus bracket 0, 0,25 times by 70,9. And now we can pop that in our calculators and get the numbers together. So we got 12,99 minus bracket, this thing here, 0, 0,25 times by 70,9, close bracket equals which is minus 4.7. Remember, always choose this in places. So it's minus 4.74. So we've got 8A is equal to minus 4.74 minus T. And that's equation two. Now, remember, we're working out the tension in the string, the tension in the string. And we've got two equations. We've got this dude here, and we've got this dude here. Now, one of the ways to do it is actually to solve, it's actually easier to solve with T, find A and then substitute back in, which we can do. Um, the other way is to multiply both 5A by 8 and 8A by 5, but it's just going to be a nightmare. So let's solve for T. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to raise all of this. Guys, if you were following it and you got a little bit lost and now I've erased it, remember that you can just go and press the button exactly the same as you got to this lesson the last time, the same link, exactly the same link will send you to a recording of this lesson. And then you can go back to where we were and see what you've missed out and didn't understand and watch it again. Um, and what's also nice about that is that then if you want to, you can actually go back to it again and you can stop the recording, oopsie, sorry, we, we, we can stop the recording um, and you can actually, what you can do is you can try the question for yourself before you even get to the point where I'm doing it and see if you can do it all by yourself and if that, if you can, that is awesome because that's the way to do these things and make sure you understand. Doing it while I'm doing it and go, yeah, 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 okay, I understand what you did. No. That's not how you actually do it because unfortunately there's nobody in the exams that you can just follow along, okay? You need to actually be able to do it for yourself. Okay, so we're going to solve both of these for T. So T is going to equal 5A minus plus 49. I've just taken the 49 across. So now we're going to make that equation 3. And then this becomes, um, take it across, becomes T is equal to minus 8A minus 4. 0.74. Okay, and that's going to be equation four. And now we're going to equate equation three and four. So we're going to go 5a plus 49. 
is equal to minus 8a minus 4 comma 7 4. So we take all the a's to one side and all the other things to the other side. So we've got 5a plus 8a is equal to 49 plus, sorry, minus 49 minus 4 comma 7 4. So therefore you've got 13a is equal to, so we need a calculator. Do we? No, we don't. It's minus 53 comma 7 4. Now we need a calculator. So we can say that that is 53.74 divided by 13 equals 4.13. So it's minus 4.13. So that's interesting. So it is moving to the left, but it's slowing down. Okay, so it's moving to the left, but it's slowing down. Okay, so its acceleration is minus 4.13 meters per second squared, but that's not what they asked. They asked for the tension. So what are we going to do? We have to substitute in and I'm just going to substitute into equation 3. It makes it easier. So I'm going to go 5 times minus 4 comma 1 3 plus 49 equals and I pop this in the calculator. So I'm going to go clear it and I'm going to 5 times by negative 4.1 4.1.13 close bracket plus 49 equals and that becomes 28.35 so it becomes 28.35 what? Newtons. Okay then, sure, quite a long question, quite tedious, okay, but if you just take it baby steps, you can always do it, but remember that even if they ask you to only draw the free body diagram of one of the objects, draw the other one because it really helps you, it really helps you to understand what's going on. Right, now I'm going to do this question as well. And I think this is our last 10 two-body system questions. No, there's another one. And the reason I'm so keen to do these is, like I said, it's very popular at the moment. And you've really got to understand them and make sure you can do them. So I've included quite a few, like I've, as you've seen, we've done two already and we're going to do two more. For the simple reason that it's so popular and so important at the moment that you guys know how to do this, okay? So it says two blocks of mass 20 kgs and 5 kgs respectively are connected by light inextensible string P. What does that mean? It means it doesn't actually make a difference to the sum, okay? A second light inextensible string Q is attached to the 5 kilogram block, runs over light friction as and there's a constant horizontal force of 250 newtons pull the second string as shown. So I'm going to choose this direction as positive. I'm not saying it's moving that way. I'm just choosing it to be positive. It says the magnitudes of the tensions in P and Q are called T1 and T2. Okay, ignore the effects of air friction. Draw a labeled free diagram, body diagram, indicating all the forces acting on the 5 kilogram. Okay, so they then want us to calculate the magnitude of the tension in string one. So I'm going to do both the five kilogram and 20 kilogram. Admittedly, if this was in the exams, I will only get marks for the drawing that I did for the five kilogram, but the 20 kilogram one is going to help me as well. So let's do it. So we've got a free body diagram. So I've got a colored in dot. Okay. And this is five kilograms. Do you agree there's always a force of gravity? There we go, force of gravity, right? And that's supposed to be a straight line, so I apologize. Okay. Then, what else do we know? We know that there's a tension T2 up, T2. But there's another force on here. And that is the force of the tension T1. Okay. So T2 is pulling it up, T1 is pulling it down, and then we've got the force of gravity, and that is on the five kilogram block. Now let's draw the 20 kilogram block. The 20 kilogram block has only got two forces acting on it. It has got 
force of gravity, its specific force of gravity, the 20 kilogram, I'm doing it like that, and I'll put a five here just to make it easier. And we've got T1 up. And obviously this T1 is equal to that T1, and that's a 20 kilogram block. Okay, now it says calculate the magnitude of the tension T1 in string P. Okay, and P is T1. So what they really want us to work out is T1. Now, do you agree that this string here is being pulled by this rope here? Okay. So the tension in T2 is actually equal to 250. They're the same string. So this T2 is actually 250 newtons, which is quite convenient. Okay. Right. So let's look at our two equations because, again, as with all of these things, you always have to make, well, 90% of them, you have to make um, simultaneous equations. Okay. So for T1, for T1, okay, we've got F net is equal to mass times acceleration, which equals, and I've chosen this way to the right, left is positive, so it's going to be T2 plus minus T1 plus minus the force of gravity on the 5 kilogram. Okay, do we agree? So the mass of the 5 kilogram is obviously 5, and that's the A, is equal to T2, which we've already said is 250, minus T1, minus the mass of this, which is 5, times 9.8. So therefore, we've got 5a is equal to, and now we're just going to pop this in our calculator to get the numbers out. So it's 250 minus bracket 5 times 9.8, close bracket, equals, and that's 201. So it's 201 minus T1. Okay, so that's equation one. Let's see what we can do with this bit here. So we're going to do T1 again, but this is of the five kilograms, and now we're doing the 20 kilogram one. So again, we've got F net equals mass times acceleration, which is equal to T1 plus minus the force of gravity. The mass of this is 20 A. T1, we're trying to work out, minus 20 times by 9, 8. So therefore, 20A is equal to 20 times 9.8. And you guys should be able to do this because it's 196. So it's T1 minus 196. And that's equation 2. And again, although they're asking us to work out the magnitude of tension T1, it's actually easier to solve both of these for T1. Or, you know what we could do? Let's do this one slightly differently just to give you an idea what it would look like. Do you agree that that's 5A and that's 20A and 5 is a factor of 20? So what I could do is I could take T1, this equation 1, and I could multiply it by 4. If I do that, that becomes 20A is equal to, this becomes 4, that's a 0, and 4 times 2 is 8, minus 4 T1, and we can call that equation 3. And now we can equate equation 3 and equation 2. We can say, well, we've got 20A is equal to 804 minus 4 T1, okay? which equals T1 minus 196. So we can take all the T's to the one side and all the numbers to the other side. So we can say 804 plus 196 is equal to T1 plus 4 T1. So we've got 5 T1 is equal to 6 and 4 is 10 carry 1, 9 and 1 is 10 carry 1, 8 and 1 is 9 carry 1, which is 0. Wasn't that pretty? So therefore, T1 is equal to 1,000 divided by 5, which is 200 newtons. There we go. Oopsie. Okay, so there we go. So that's not too bad. Okay, that wasn't too bad. So again, a hint. Like I said before, you need to 
draw both free body diagrams for yourself. Okay. And then you need to do simultaneous equations and then you can do it either. You can have solved for T1, but I just wanted to show you how you could have, in this case, multiplied this by four. To, and, but remember what you do the one side, you have to do to both sides and then solve and you can get your tension. Right. Okay, grade um, 11s. What I'd like to suggest you do is that um, if you're watching this now or just before our next lesson, which is next week, Tuesday, what I would like to suggest you do is you take a screenshot of this or you pause the video and then if nothing else, draw the free body diagrams for the five kilogram and two kilogram, just that. Don't worry about the questions. We'll go through them when I see you on Tuesday, but just draw the free body diagrams for the five kilogram and two kilogram um, because that's generally what they're going to ask you before we do anything else. Right, I hope you have a great day further. Um, yeah, that's all. Have a wonderful day. Cheers.